Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nilas and this is the series of tutorials and guides here on YouTube covering all aspects of the game and aims to provide insights and resources to help you improve as an engineer. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at early game smelting. This is when you transition from just having a few smelters here and there to start building the first arrays or columns of smelting that will support your base as you continue to grow. Builds I'm presenting here are very standardized and I have uh, chosen to go for a design that is aesthetic and has sort of the same footprint across the different types of smelting columns. Each episode of the Factorio Masterclass originates from a workshop session I stream live on my Twitch channel. This is at twitch.tv slash Nilos. You're very welcome to drop by. Usually these take place on Mondays at 8 p.m. Central European time. And feel free to drop by and help decide, design and discuss upcoming guides. Every time we make a design, I learn something new, so I'm sure that you will also learn something new by dropping by. If you like these kind of tutorial videos, then hit the like button and of course subscribe to the channel if you want to catch more of this type of content. If you have ideas, comments or feedback, you're welcome to leave a comment below or join our Discord server, all links in the description below. With that, let's dive in. So you're very much in the early stages of your base and you want to structure your smelting and also make it in a way that it can scale. We're talking about early games, so there'll be no electric furnace, no beacons, no modules, because that's more to mid and late game. So the very first smelting column, let's just look at some of the basics. We have the stone furnace, it has crafting speed one. We have the recipes, each of these craft in 3.2 seconds, 3.2 seconds, and 16 seconds, but takes five, which is basically the same. It's 3.2 seconds each. Those are the ones we're gonna look at. We're also going to look at stone bricks, which craft also in 3.2 seconds, but has two inputs for one output. The ones we're gonna look at, copper, iron, stone bricks, and steel. Now, since it has 3.2 crafting speed, that means we are actually going to need 48 of these stone furnaces in order to craft in order to consume a full belt of 15. We'll just do it here. So if I have 48 and they're all crafting every 3.2 seconds, that gives 15. So if we want to consume a full yellow belt, let's start from that perspective here. We're going to consume a full belt. I am going to simulate it. This one, we use copper for our testing purposes because we're going to use the iron for smelting. So the way that I build it, I am not saying this is the best way, but it's my way and I like it. I'm gonna do it this way. So what happens now is that I take my full belt and I split it into two half belts. The point of this is that I can now take all on the other side of the belt and that's uh, really handy actually. So I'm going to say from here, that will be the outbound and I'm going to set, I don't know, is this, this is too close, right? Yeah, too close. Yeah, yeah. Let's go up. And take inbound, inbound. Yeah, and here. That's going to be a good starting point. We look at the way we can all poles. Like so, and of course, we also have lights. I'm just going to bring it out here so it is fired up. Now you can see this part, but we don't have coal, so let's bring in the coal. Bring in the coal from here. There are many ways to bring in coal. This is the way I like it. I can show you an alternative if you have that preference. And that would be destroyed right now. Okay, yeah, some mistakes are bound to happen when you're building it live. There. I'm going to go under and then continue onwards. Here. So what we're seeing now is this is going up, they are working, and this section has 12, 24, something more, and that was 36, sorry, <laughs> and there. So all of this, I'm just going to bring it up here and make the crash compactor for all of these, and then we're just going to let it run for just a bit. And we will see that everything goes in here, everything consumes, this will flow continuously. And all the way up here, we'll actually get the copper all the way up 
first, you also need the pole to get all the way up. It'll get up. It'll get up here and then it'll start working. You'll be seeing that the belt gets more and more compressed as the, everyone, every one of these gets operational. You will see that the belt is completely filling up. You can see here how well it fits up in, into the holes that are available. And we now have a fully compressed belt. We're consuming everything on the belt. The belt here continuously flows and we've now built what can what can only be described as a perfect starting smelting setup. These ones, very important, they do not consume or they do not stockpile here. Another thing to concern yourself with is that when we have 48, so the question is often, so how much coal does that take and how many can, how many smelters can this coal belt support? The thing is, each each uh, coal on the belt can support 44.4 smelters. That means each one, uh, basically the other way around, this one takes a slightly more than one coal per second. So you can easily support 10 of these, 8, 10, 12, but not really more than that. Then you have to be careful. So that was the first one. This is our copper smelting. Now let's uh, look at another another example of this or another sort of case that we can do is that we can actually also, for example, if we build it. Yeah, then now I'm just going to make an alternative. I don't particularly like this alternative, but I can understand if some people like it better. Yeah. This is basically just giving you an option. This one is slightly cheaper because it doesn't use as many underground belts and underground belts are more expensive. However, there, there we go. Last one. But I prefer this one and uh, it just sort of has this very nice clean line through here and I don't really care if it uses one more underground belts. Now, moving on. If we want to do the stone bricks, so the issue with the stone bricks is actually, I'm going to start the same way and go here. And then for the stone bricks, we might as well just take only half of it because it only needs half. Go out, goes up. This will also consume a full belt. So let's just prove it go and you also can see now how well this tiles go exactly in and matches up with the next one which is kind of the point so you feed in coal from one side also feed it in from the other side if you like and that will just gradually support everything and you can tile it does have one more additional feature or benefit if i copy this whole thing and then put it in and this is very specific for the way i build things i built city blocks and if you want if you do like city blocks why wouldn't you then this one two three four five six seven eight fits exactly within a city block and then you have room for merging it back in here and going out somewhere and you bring it in with a train out here make a splitter and it's all good so that's just an extra little quirk about this design is that it fits eight of these exactly. So let's look at steel. Steel is slightly different. Steel here is takes five per 16 seconds, which means it has the same consumption rate as this one, but it needs the iron first. So there's several different ways of doing it. I'm doing it in a way that was shared on the workshop session so if you want to join we actually learned something new i think that all of us were kind of surprised that hey that's a pretty awesome way to do it so um yeah do drop on by it's i'm gonna mention it it's on twitch tv slash nilos where i do these uh, kind of sessions every monday and sometimes other evenings in the week if we just feel like it so what happens now this one is 24 that means it'll consume half a belt of iron. Well, should we make two of those then? Yeah, let's do that. There. I'm going to split this one so that you can see that it actually only consumes 
I've built. Now, what I do now is weird. I'm going to do that one. And make the coal to the right. Yeah. Because what happens is I can now copy this one and it here as well. And what I can then do is I can that's almost I can almost do this. This means if you look at this, it actually supports really close. They actually are completely next to each other. Now this has to be turned around. Because now it gets from the inside and outputs on the outside. Minor change. And I'll work through the math afterwards so you can see that it actually is working. Up and out. There. And we're going to take one more of these and stick it right there. So let's work on the math here. What we're seeing here is this part, we agreed that this is crafting half a belt, half a yellow belt, 24. We can do the calculations. If I have 24 and they craft every 3.2 seconds, that is half a belt. So half a belt will be able to merge into half a belt here. You can see the belt is full. And what is not working though, is that one. That's why it didn't work. I was just confused. There we go. <clears throat> so everything is now working. They're all getting some. And as this one started before, there will be a stockpile in here. No, in this one where it can't really get rid of it. But that's, uh, that's totally okay. It will go all the way up here and eventually it will also be able to feed the very last ones as well. These are just waiting a bit for it to come in, but they will be working again. So what we are having now is we have one belt coming in, being consumed continuously, going up here. You can see it feeds all the way up here. This one is working, this one is working, and it goes in here into this merge, going all the way up. And because again, this started earlier, there is a backlog providing some coal, some now, you might comment that, hey, this one doesn't work if you're placing it next to that one. That's true. That's true. But I would then, on the other hand, say, then just place the steel on that side, then it works. Or, even better, only make steel. Or, if you want to merge it, uh, have them next to each other like this, you can, you can have the stone bricks next to the steel. But it works really well this way, that it actually merges over and goes up here. Now, of course, this design can also be upgraded, and we're going to take a look at that. But first, I want to take a moment just thank the Patreon supporters who choose to support the channel and the work I do here. The Patreon support is what enables me to be a full-time content creator. So thank you very much to all the people who are pledging. And if you want to support the work I do here on the channel, then uh, it's supporting on Patreon is the best way to do that. So thank you very much to all the people supporting and pledging. Now let's talk about upgrades, because obviously this is starting, so it, but you also want to upgrade it. So let's see, we want to upgrade it to red belts. If we upgrade to red belts, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, this is 15 per second, this is crafting speed one. So if I upgrade everything to the next tier, like so, it will be upgraded. And now we have 13 inbound, 13. No, sorry, 30 inbound, 30 outbound, and these are now producing at twice the speed. Very, very simple. Likewise, we can do that on uh, one. I'm just going to remove these because they are not relevant. Yeah. I can upgrade this part as well. There. So what you will be seeing now is that we now have 30 inbound and the outbound. I did not upgrade the outbound belt because I wanted to illustrate that we should now have a fully compressed yellow belt coming out because 30 inbound 15 outbound fully compressed no stockpile here when it comes to the steel it gets even better because the thing is since these ones 
Yeah, so if I just upgrade basically this part, now I can get twice as much in. I can pressurize these. I can upgrade just this, just this, and this one. And the outbound belt here, but this one needs to carry twice as much. And the last one as well. Yeah, so what has what I did now is each of these, these 24 created at B2 will craft a full yellow belt. The full yellow belt can be merged into half of a red belt, which is why I have the red belt here. And that's the works, which means that I can actually build this one almost exclusively with almost exclusively with yellow belts. Only this much, which actually sort of begs the question of shouldn't I just always build it like this to begin with? It is definitely an option because you want to get the steel. You can't, of course, make all these steel furnaces easily without actually having some steel. So I would say build it with the stone furnaces, but look into prioritizing this one as you get further up in tech. And there you basically have it. Those are the very, very simple early game smelting columns and also how to upgrade them. There isn't really much more to it and I don't really want to go into later game because I'll have separate mega base builds at a later stage but I've been uh, I've been receiving quite a few requests about good early game smelting and I must say that as we did this in the session it actually turns out that this one was a completely new design that we hadn't seen before there are other ones used by specifically speedrunners they are they have some advantages this in the terms of using less belts I do prefer this one for the specific reason that it has the same shape and size as the normal smelting column, which is something I really prioritize. So it looks much more aesthetic having these next to each other. And you know, aesthetics is not to be uh, discounted. If you have enjoyed this little tutorial, then uh, hit the like button. And if you haven't already, then hit the subscribe button. We are just around the 50 uh, K mark, which is pretty damn amazing. So thank you everyone for who has been subscribing to the channel and do leave your comments about the future things that we can do and if you have uh, improved builds then you're very welcome to share the both screenshots and blueprints but preferably do that in discord it's a much better place so also check out the discord if you like if you want to be part of uh, the design process for future episodes then i'm streaming these on twitch it's monday evenings it's on twitch tv slash nilaus and if you just want more Factorio, then I'm also streaming Factorio Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sunday over at Twitch. So I hope to see you there or over here on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, stay effective.